Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are gathered here again this week to uh, lift up the name of Jesus, and we want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. You have brought us through another week, Lord, and many have not made it thus far. We recognize, God, that you are all that you said you would be, that you have blessed us, that you have kept us, even in the midst of this pandemic, which now has elevated itself and more people are passing. This week, we lost a very dear young man, a musician in our community, to the COVID-19, Courtney Smith, Lord, we pray for his family. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the churches all over the world, Lord, and especially in our community here. God, we ask that you be with them, that you keep them sensitive to this COVID-19 and its other, uh, this elevation that's going on with this uh, pandemic with this virus. Oh Lord, protect us and keep us all. We're at your mercy even now as we speak. Oh God, bless our brothers and sisters all over the country, all over the world, Lord, who are dealing with this pandemic. We pray for our missionaries. Oh God, wherever they may be, Lord, we pray that you will have your way with them. We pray for our churches, Lord, that have survived this pandemic. Be with the leaders of them, Lord. Touch them and be with them in a special way. We pray for all those who are out there, Lord, who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Lord, we pray for those who have listened to the rhetoric that opposes the word of God. Lord, we pray, God, that you would just have your way. Bless us now as we go into our service, Lord, and be with us, we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen and amen.
Praise the Lord. Lord God, our Father, now go with us and be with us in this word today that it could blemish us, but yet clear, uh, heal us, that it would clear us and give us a better way to walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Um, it was imperative to me to... Uh, uh, look into a text that we at the church use so readily in our Sunday school department at the conclusion of our adult study. A text that many of you are familiar with from 2 Timothy, uh, the second chapter in the 15th verse. 
and I'll be reading from, <clears throat> reading from the English Standard Version, which says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, uh, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth from the English Standard uh, uh, Translation. And uh, I wanna talk for a few minutes from the thought, spiritual competency, spiritual competency. The NIV translates this text, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Uh, Philip's version says, for yourself, concentrate on winning God's approval, on being a workman with nothing to be ashamed of and who knows how to use the word of truth to the best advantage. Amen, to the best advantage. You know, a lot of people want would uh, they claim their Christianity, but very few of them have gone to the Holy Writ for instruction on how to be Christian. So they're, they're operating uh, pretty much out of emotion and feeling and not the instruction, not the divine instruction of the Holy Spirit. And so that's why we can see our society plummeting deeper and deeper into the abyss. Uh, and so I say today, I want to try to uh, be able to help uh, clarify some of these things, uh, why it's so important for us. Not that it is, uh, while it is not necessary that one have a graduate degree from a school of theology before he or she can serve God effectively, it remains true that God places no premium on ignorance. In the words of our text, the apostle is urging upon Timothy, his young disciple, and all his readers the importance of presenting ourselves to our Father as competent workers who are skilled in doing the work of God's kingdom. Paul encouraged believers to present their bodies to God as living sacrifices, over in Romans 12. It is in our bodies that we are to honor and glorify God. It is in our bodies that we are to demonstrate both the wisdom and power of God. Paul affirmed this same concept in his first letter to the Corinthians in which he declared that the body is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit and consequently it should not participate in immoral activities in 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 20. The words of our text emphasize maturity skill, and competency in the service of our Lord. Paul appealed to Timothy. He appealed to his sense of pride and personal accomplishment, a workman who has no need to be ashamed. He says, have you ever seen a carpenter who was ashamed of his craftsmanship? Have you ever known a bricklayer who laid a crooked wall? Have you ever known a woman who made a dress and then was ashamed to wear it? The Apostle Paul was encouraging Timothy to present himself to God and to do what was necessary to become a skilled worker who rightly handles the word of truth. We can do a number of very practical things to improve our spiritual competency in our ministry for the Lord. The King James Version translates this verse Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Competency requires study and practice. Only as we study can we be skilled. So let us focus our attention on how we should study the Bible if we would rightly handle it so as to accomplish the purpose for which God intended it. We must read the Bible regularly, first of all. That we should spend time every day listening to God as he speaks to us through the scriptures. Now I know, hold on y'all, I know you're busy and this, that, and the other, but you, you know, your day should, you should feel as though your day is incomplete if you don't spend a few minutes. He ain't asking you to spend hours, just a few minutes in the word, reading certain segments of scripture, or you can read it it, it, along, you know, uh, um, that's the term I want to use. You can read it according as it's laid out 
or you can read it according, I mean, there's so many different ways you can read scripture. You can read scripture chronologically. You can read scripture sequ uh, sequentially. You can read uh, scripture uh, 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 recreationally, but, but in any way you read it, you should do so uh, on a regular basis so that you can become familiar with the text and hear the instruction of God to your heart and to your soul and that be confirmed for the Holy Spirit from within you because the word, this word was inspired by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we should read the Bible subjectively. It is not enough that we read the Bible merely as a record of what happened in the ancient past. But God can and will speak to us in the present if we are willing to listen to him. Now, I know there's a lot of things out there challenging you and a lot of isms and, and philosophies out there trying to win your allegiance. But, but all of them come when once gone full circle, come back to God. And so I say to you, and if you don't believe me, keep, keep on hanging out there and you'll find out it all comes back to God. Subjectively, we should read it. He will come back to us if we're willing to listen to him. We should also read the Bible intelligently. One must beware of reading the Bible as he or she would read some kind of a crystal ball or some kind of a fictional book. We must follow certain guidelines as we study the Bible. We must understand the language of scripture, first and foremost. What do you mean, Reverend? Well, I'm talking about how it's written, the type of writings that it is, whether it be historical or poetic, prophetic or doctrinal or whatever. Uh, we, 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 the scripture is written in, in, you know, in various tones. So, so study the Bible and be able to identify how, how the scripture is written. Let us try to understand what the Bible meant in its historical context. In other words, its chrono chronological layout. This is when it was first recorded by man under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let us try to understand the language. We need to understand the figures of speech and terminology that the author was using to communicate divine truth to us. We need to study the Bible in a logical manner not merely searching for proof text, but let us examine each phrase and verse in its context. Let us study the paragraph in the light of the chapter and the chapter in the light of the book and each book in the context of the whole of scripture. Let us remember that the Bible is a record of God's self-revelation. Only the Holy Spirit can unlock his secrets and reveal to us the great biblical truth of God. Let us read the Bible systematically. A good pattern would be to read five chapters of the Old Testament every day and three chapters in the New Testament, reading straight through both the Old and New Testaments. Uh, that may be a little extensive if you don't have that kind of time, but read the Bible. You, you should come up with a system. Read it until read it until the story makes sense. Read it until you can 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 put a, a pin in it. So when you pick it up tomorrow, you'll know where you left off. We should read the Bible prayerfully, memorize and meditate on the great promises and warnings in scripture. Let us read the Bible obediently. We should study the words so that we might learn about God, ourselves and others. The Bible has historical truths that, that, that secular truth, uh, secular history doesn't even give us. So we should read the Bible uh, uh, obediently. And as God reveals his truth to us, let us respond to it. And so my brothers and sisters, in closing, I was, this is not a long message today, but I just wanted to put this out to you so that you could grasp it, embrace it. And if you're not doing it, Perhaps you will begin to do it and begin to take your relationship with God seriously. 
because God wants a personal relationship with each one of us. Contrary to what the theologians say and all those other past uh, church fathers and all that stuff, he wants a personal relationship with each one of us. He knows all about us. He knows our ins and outs, our ups and downs, our goings and our comings. And so I say to you, let this relationship be important to you. Let it be most important to you because after all is said and done, God, God forbid anything comes bad with other associates that you have, but after all is said and done, it's going to come down to you and God. And in closing, I want to say it is important that ministers interpret the scriptures correctly and apply them properly. Too many people who rely on the pastors and the ministers, uh, uh, you're relying on their relationship and not your own. And so I say to you, you know, it's good that, that you have people ushering, ushering you into the faith, but it's up to you to know the truth of God's word, because it's, even though the Bible is the same to all of us, it's personal to each one of us as well, because it's a living testimony. And it will apply to, a different, to someone else differently than it applies to me, just like it applies to me differently than it applies to you. It is just as important that Sunday school teachers know how to handle the word of God properly. That's right. If you're going to teach Sunday school, and, and that's something that we should desire. That's something that we should push for. Uh, you know, you ain't going to be a babe in Christ. All You ain't going to be on the pablum or the milk for all your life. You wasn't on, on the pablum and milk for your regular life. So you're not going to be on the pablum of the scriptures for regular life. You're going to grow. You're going to mature. And so there should be a desire to share this news to the younger generations coming behind you and even to those of your peers. And it is equally important that every Christian study to show himself or herself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who uses the word of God correctly. It's important that we do that for our own basic understanding and guidance. If we will study diligently and present ourselves joyfully, to our precious Lord, it is highly unlikely that we will be ashamed of ourselves or of our lives when we stand before him, when it's all over. So my brothers and sisters, it is, it is, it is, it is important, I can't emphasize enough how important it is for you to know the instruction of Yahweh, to know the divine instruction of Yahweh and to pursue a relationship with him that, that supersedes anything uh, that you have heretofore, uh, that you have heretofore done uh, in your life. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, our Father, we thank you. We praise you. We recognize, Lord, that we need to know you better. And the only way we can know you better is by studying your word and growing in the grace that you have for us. And so God, give us the patience with you. Help us to recognize that we have a responsibility in this relationship. And we'll be so sure to give you all praise honor and glory in Jesus name. Amen and amen. <laughs>
and praying each and every, 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 every day, Lord. When Satan comes to hinder you, what you gotta do? Fall down on your bend and knees and pray. Oh, fall, 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 fall from your hands. Oh, the Lord, I can just fall. All I can say. to show thyself approved unto God, a workman or woman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Until next week, my brothers and my sisters, God be with you and God bless you. In Jesus' name.